industry has welcomed the amendments to laws related to the so-called two-pot retirement system. Many says it brings some clarity to the financial sector and to many cash-trapped South Africans who wish to dip into their retirement savings. So for more on this, we are joined by Michelle Acton, the Retirement Reform Executive at Old Mutual. Michelle, thank you so much for your time. So these retirement amendments have been long awaited. We know that they only come into effect March next year. Very briefly, just remind us how the so-called savings and retirement pot will work in terms of what one can access. Okay, great. So I think the first thing to remember is that the changes are looking at future money. And so the idea is after the 1st of March 2024, all future contributions will be split one third into what they're calling a savings component and two thirds into a retirement component. And the idea is that one third savings component is actually what you can usually take as a lump sum at retirement, but the laws will now enable you to be able to access that money prior to retirement if need be, uh, for example, in an emergency. And then the retirement component, that is the two thirds that normally you use to buy a pension at retirement, that component will be fully preserved and you can only access it at retirement to purchase a pension. So the idea in terms of the access is that now we're currently South Africans part of a retirement fund um, can only usually access their money when they change jobs. They're delinking the ability to access this saving or your retirement money from changing jobs and rather saying actually a third of it, you can access it if you need it prior to retirement. Understanding whatever you access out of your savings pot prior to retirement will actually be an advance for your lump sum at retirement. So you'll be basically borrowing from your future self. So this also means that businesses will have to reconfigure all their retirement product systems effectively in just about eight months. Do you think they will be able to meet this deadline? It's tight. Look, we have known this is coming. Um, Treasury and um, you know, National Treasury has been quite clear that uh, these changes are coming. So. So they have been up until now being able to get started. But yes, we've got a significant amount of workers industry to do to get ready for processing these savings pot claims. Um, and so I think most administrators will be doing everything they can to be compliant. Um, but more time would be great in terms of making sure we're ready. But yeah, uh, eight months to make these sort of size changes is, is, is tight. So with the savings spot, um, you can take up to 25,000 Rand or um, about 10% of your savings. What will it be in terms of the tax you're going to pay on that? Because I think that's something that people sometimes forget. Okay, so just in terms of clarity first, this 10% cap to 25 is not limited on the savings part. What they're saying is when the legislation changes, so on the 1st of March, of your old money, so your vested money, what you've already got saved up in your fund, 10% of that capped at 25,000 will be transferred into your savings pot as an opening balance. So that'll be your ability, you'll, you'll then be able to start accessing from day one. So what this change is doing is saying, actually on day one, every South African, if you're a member of a retirement fund, will have an amount of money in your savings pot to be able to access. Um, and essentially, any access you take out of that savings part will actually be subject to your marginal tax rate. So that'll be individual for each individual taxpayer. However much they earn and whatever their tax rate is, that is the tax you'll pay because any withdrawals from your savings part will actually fall into your taxable income definition moving forward. So, Michelle, some say that that 25,000 rand limit is, is just not enough and that there would still be those who would resign or to get, go to a different job to be able to access more money from their previous pot or their future pot. Um, what do you say to that? I think the challenge is South Africans are cash trapped at the moment. I mean, we're in a very tough economic environment. Um, so the, this amount that being accessed, it's that balancing act, right? Because you can't enable people to access everything because that'll have massive impact on, on, on the markets. It'll have impacts on people's future retirement. So yes, I think the idea that there's going to be the small amount um, starting is actually a step in the right direction to help. But this change is not really going to solve immediate problems, but it is designed in the long term to actually ensure moving forward that every South African, if you're a member of a retirement fund, you actually have an emergency savings pot that you haven't had before. So I think what's important to remember is 
These changes are not saying, actually, when we bring them in, that's it, it'll solve all your financial woes. Not at all. I mean, the amounts are too small. And we know, actually, if you look at how much people have saved in their retirement funds, it's also not, not um, large amounts. But the idea is if we're going forward, then actually it makes it easier for South Africans because we know, especially in COVID, we learned very a lot of lessons in COVID. And one of them was people don't have large amounts of emergency savings money. So the idea with this new system is moving forward, your future contribution, a third of them will be put into a pot. But if you leave it for only when you need it, it will make a massive difference to enabling access in the future. So, so I think it's important to note that Yes, there's going to be a small amount to be accessed now, but the idea of this change is actually to improve the system going into the future. Just a quick question to clarify. So it's not just a once-off time you'll, you'll be able to access this savings pot. Um, you will have continuous access to it? Correct. So essentially how it's going to work is you're going to have roughly three pots of money, let's put it that way. You're going to have your vested pot, which is your old money as of the 1st of March, you're going to have a savings pot and a retirement pot. Now, on the 1st of March, 10% capped at 25 of your old or your vice vested pot money will be moved into your savings pot as an opening balance. But there isn't a use it or lose it. So if you don't touch it, it stays there. It continues to earn investment return. Then moving forward, your, your contributions you pay into the fund every single month will continue to build up a third into your savings and two thirds into your retirement pot. And around that savings pot, you will be able to access that savings pot once a year. If you don't access it because you don't need it, great. You leave it there. It continues adding towards your lump sum at retirement. But if you do have a situation where you need to access it, you can access it when you need it. Um, so it's really now designed into the future of being more of a rainy day fund um, where you are borrowing from your lump sum at retirement. Um, and so that's really how it's designed uh, moving forward. Lastly, Michelle, if we look at the liquidity of these funds that we are you know, drawing money from, um, what are the sort of fears and challenges around that? Or is, is industry confident that we'll be able to tackle that next year, 1 March? We're comfortable from a liquidity perspective based on the design of the retirement funds and they stand with Regulation 28. Because the amount that can be accessed on day one is only 10%, um, capped at 25. We think there's sufficient liquidity. The bigger challenge is actually not so much the liquidity side. The bigger challenge for industry is how do we process claims as they come forward? Because it's a brand new claim time. If you think about it, um, currently, the, the only reason you access your money from a retirement fund is if you resigned or you die or you retire. Um, and those are the main reasons. Now we're creating a new claim time, which brings extra volumes. Um, so, for example, as Old Mutual, we've got almost 2 million retirement fund members. And of those 2 million, a very, very large proportion will be able to access in day one. So our biggest focus for 1 March is more how do we make sure members can be able to come forward and access it from a claims processing, from an administration perspective, to understand how much is in there, how are they going to do it. So that, for us, I think, is probably a bigger focus for 1 March. Thank you so much for joining us, Michelle. That was Michelle Acton, the Retirement Reform Executive at Old Mutual.